everybody. Welcome to CVG TV. My name is Gregory Parks and you are watching Conlink. With us today is another member of our board of directors presenting Tim Wick. Thank Hello. you for joining us, Tim. Hi. Hi. Now, what is your position uh, on the board of directors this year? I am the director of production, which means I'm in charge of things like this. Uh, and also... Oh, the boss. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> also, uh, main stage, harmonic convergence. Uh, pretty much anything that involves performances is sort of my ballywhack, as it were. Excellent. Yeah. And so what, so I know you've been considerably involved in Convergence in the past. It I'm, is true. I'm, I'm understating this, I realize. Maybe. Um, but uh, so what drove or led you to production this year? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, I, I was actually one of the founding board members of Convergence back in, we started in 1997. So I was a board member for 10 years and then I've been off the board for more than 10 years and opted to run for a position this year. And productions, I, I, I've been involved in theater all my life. I have a theater degree, productions is theater. And I felt like it was something I was qualified to help run that I understood the language that my department heads were speaking mm -hmm. and that I could hopefully be that person there to support them when they're saying to the other directors this is what we need that I could be that person that says this is what they're saying so they don't sit there and go why does this cost x amount of dollars I don't understand and I can say you don't <laughs> understand how much it should cost <laughs> and uh, hopefully hopefully we can we can create create some sort of agreement from there yeah, like you're, you're getting a deal. Yeah. You don't understand this. You're getting a deal. This is cheap. Yeah. So um, then what are, you, what are you looking forward to this year? And what do you foresee as being challenges for you this year? Oh, uh, the biggest challenge is that uh, I'm still involved. I've been involved in a lot of productions at Convergence over the years. So that's another reason that I felt like it was a department, a division that I could that I could relate to. There, there's a, I do a lot of performances on main stage. I've done a lot of performances on main stage over the years. Uh, I do a lot of the performative panels. I have a band that appears in Harmonic Convergence. I've, I've done uh, spoken word in Wordslinger's Way. I've worked with all of these departments before. So I felt like we all, we all kind of knew each other. But of course, I'm working with these departments this year doing shows on main stage and my band's going to be performing at Harmonic Convergence and I've been asked to do a story for one of the shows at Word Slinger's Way and I also have to be a director and there's all sorts of work oh. that goes into that. <laughs> so what I've managed to do is take an already busy schedule and ensured that anytime I don't have something actually on the schedule, I will be busy doing something else. So if that's the, big, that's the biggest challenge. Also, trying to make sure I don't look at my texts and messages on my phone when I'm actually in the middle of a panel, because that'll just be bad. And I need to, <laughs> I need to focus on the panel and then put out the fires after. So with all of this, you know, I just talked a whole bunch of you know, procedural and operational yeah. stuff. What are you looking forward to this year? A lot. I am looking forward to a lot. I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is just the idea that we're going to be able to do a convention that's a little closer to a full pre-pandemic convention. I, I keep saying that I felt like last year was kind of 50% of a convention. Wow. Obviously, 2020 was 0% of a <laughs> We did an online convention, but yeah. it was still kind of 0% of a convention. We want to get closer to 90 to 95%. We know that there's still Still a few things that aren't quite ready to come back fully, but that's, mm -hmm. that to me is just like the, the best thing to be able to, to say that we've moved, moved as much past the worst of it and we can have a convention again. But things that I'm looking to forward to personally, uh, there's actually a panel I do with you, which is the, the Star Wars love panel, where we just do a panel about how much we love Star Wars. And <laughs> no hate allowed. Yeah, absolutely. No hate allowed. It's like, if you want to come in there and tell us how much you love something that you personally don't care for, we are just going to smile and nod and tell you how great we, it is that we think that you, that you love that thing, whatever it is. And I'm not going to say what it is right now, mm. because I think the really important thing is Star Wars is something that a lot of people love yeah. and we all have our petty frustrations about Star Wars but mm -hmm. 
Sometimes it's nice to just sit in a room and go, yeah, but there's so much great about Star Wars. Can't we just appreciate the great stuff about Star Wars for a little bit? Last year when we did the panel, we were talking about uh, droids. For some reason, the topic was droids. <laughs> and this kid comes in in a gonk droid costume. <laughs> I it remember that. So oh, great. It was uh, so great, and he was the perfect height for a gonk droid, and he had the gonk droid walk, and was it was it was perfect. And standing and ovation. Star Wars, <laughs> Star Wars is such a big part of the geek community, and it's great to watch the way Star Wars has become uh, so much more diverse, both both in representation on screen, uh, but also in the people who are producing it, the people who are creating the stories, and the stories that are being told. That it's not it's not just the Skywalker saga anymore. There's so much, they're they're filling in the edges of the Star Wars universe, and I, I I really love talking about that. And, and lots of surprise, like and that like all like this gets into like surprises with convergence. Like we, you never know what you'll stumble on mm -hmm. in convergence. You'll never know what you'll find out about. You'll never know what you'll see on the main stage or at harmonic convergence. Yeah. Like I, like before last year, I'd never, was it last year or a couple of years before? I'd never seen uh, Chuck Tingle. Chuck Tingle. For example. I, you know, and like there's, there's plenty of things to discover. Yeah. Now, what is something like with um, with all the fandoms that you're into? Like you're you're a Disney fan. I am a Disney fan. You're yes. a Star Wars fan, yes. which we just talked about. Um, what is something that either you're aware of, not necessarily, or personally into that you would like to see get more attention, get more time? in the spotlight sure. at conventions or other geek proms or... Well, let me like talk, that. because I'm on the board, there, and Convergence Events does more than just Convergence. One of the things that we have is the uh, Midwest Sci-Fi Film Festival that Convergence mm -hmm. sponsors. They just, um, a little while before this taping, had their uh, spring festival where you, it was an online festival. You could pay $10 and watch a series of short science fiction films curated uh, by the individuals putting on the festival. And on main stage this year, they're gonna present the award winners from that, from that festival and also from another one that's gonna take place in the summer, okay. uh, as well as uh, favorites by the festival creators. It's gonna be like an hour and a half to two hours. It's gonna take place in main stage, so big room, big screens, a great opportunity to watch some independently produced sci-fi fantasy and horror shorts, uh, many of which are not from America. Oh. A lot of them were from Spain in this last bunch. I watched a bunch of them. They were really, really good. And I would love people to go to main stage, watch a couple of those, and consider going to one of these sci-fi film festivals. Some of them are online, so super easy, zero entry kind of thing. You get a weekend long pass, and uh, most of the time it's like three hours worth of films and they're all mostly 15 minutes or less. So you can be like, well, watch a couple on Friday, watch a couple on Saturday, watch the rest on Sunday, whatever, whatever fits your timetable. And as far, as far as the numbers too, like I think, well, it felt last year that even, even though the numbers were lower, the enthusiasm was still there. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I think everybody was super excited to be back. Yeah, and then this year, I expect that there will be, but that will be the same thing. Like, I, because it seems like people, when you look at other conventions across the country, people are really ready to jump at the opportunity to go back to their favorite convention or to a new convention. I think like, we're seeing that everywhere. You know, yeah. talking as a Disney fan, just having been back to Disney World a couple of times in the last six months, and, uh, you know, my gosh, the, the number of people and you know it's always crowded but it feels crowded in a different way like people are just like yeah we get to go out and do stuff again uh let's ride space mountain 12 times yeah <laughs> um which i don't blame them for space mountain is no, great no, 12 times is, is great um but the more times you go on space mountain the fewer times you can go on rise of the resistance and i don't feel that's a fair trade so <laughs> but that's my personal opinion. Everybody can do whatever they want at Disney World or not at Disney World 
for the, for that matter. But I think, especially when we talk about the need at registration, the expectation for more at the doors, uh, looking at how other conventions uh, have seen a real spike in at the door registrations suggests to me that that is likely to be something that we're going to see this year. And while I say, I don't know if we're going to be at peak attendance yet, I think, I think the numbers are going to be pretty good. And I'm excited to have that many people there uh, just geeking out about the stuff they love, yeah. whether it's Star Wars or, or Pokemon or, yeah, or, or, or Marvel Cinematic Universe or, or Disney anime, World. Or, yeah. yeah, whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good problem to have. It is. It's a good problem to have. Well, thank you for joining us again on the Conlink Couch, Tim. Thank it's you for having nice me. It's always nice to have you and to speak with you. And it's always nice to have you join us here for Conlink. I'm Gregory Parks. We'll see you on the next one.